Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. It's safe to say that the internet has been an information superhighway. However, most of that information is unregulated. And a lot of that information is disappointingly misinformation. The term microdosing is being bounded about now with gay abandonment with people not really understanding the concept behind it. So, what is microdosing? It's using the minimum effective dose in the correct method to achieve the desired outcome, which is stable male androgen levels. Somebody on YouTube recently said, well, surely transcrotal testosterone cream is the purest form of microdosing possible. Um, yeah, does... 100 milligrams twice daily sound like an effective dose for a testosterone that gets released by the body in around 6 to 15 milligrams a day. So 200 milligrams a day and your body produces between 6 and 15 milligrams. Does that sound like micro dosing or does that sound like macro dosing? Um, so what's the average dose of testosterone and HCG at the men's health clinic? Well, you kind of should be able to work it out, really, between 6 and 15 milligrams. Add on the ester and you're pretty close. So I do have guys on as little as 5 milligrams. Yes, 5 milligrams of testosterone a day. How can that be? Are they hyper responders? No, they're not hyper responders. They've also got HCG in their protocol. And as we know, HCG mimics luteinizing hormone. So they have intratesticular production of testosterone. So we like the concept behind microdosing really to be hormone replacement therapy. Now, I do have some monsters on as high as 25 milligrams. Some on HCG, some not on HCG. Are they hypo responders? No, because actually they are monsters. So these guys need high testosterone levels to achieve stable male androgen levels. So we talk about the dose, but it's actually the effect it has on your target organ and tissue and blood serum levels, which is what's important. So the dose is kind of irrelevant. With microdosing, we do have a level of stability from the perspective we're not thinking about peaks and troughs because we don't have peaks and troughs. By the very nature of microdosing, you are going to have stable male androgen levels. What you need to remember is when you measure in a trough on less intensive injection frequencies is you are measuring the level at the time of the blood test. And that's usually before the next injection. So in a trough, if your injection frequency is more widespread, obviously we will have a peak and a trough. By the very nature of injecting a hormone, you are going to have a peak and a very slight trough. However, with daily injections, a daily morning injection of testosterone and HCG, you are as close as damn it mimicking natural physiology, which should be the purpose premise behind testosterone replacement therapy. We are designed to fight. We are designed to fornicate. Our DNA wants us to be strong. Our body survives on this concept of balance. Homeostasis is a complex process that involves numerous physiological processes to establish a stable internal environment despite external changes. We are constantly fighting and we're fighting against ourselves by doing silly things. Now, it's safe to say that a lot of people have got themselves into trouble because they've made bad choices. When you've got low testosterone, you realize the consequence of your bad choices. You should look to lifestyle, diet and exercise to correct the deficiency to give yourself a fighting chance to see the reward for your effort. But disappointingly, low testosterone means that often you don't see the reward for the effort, so you don't bother. 
What do you do? You turn to comfort eating because comfort eating gives you what? Comfort. What it does is it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system and you feel good. Sympathetic fight or flight, parasympathetic rest relaxation. Add to the fact that food will ultimately cause a dopamine response, which is the pleasure chemical. We're seeking that. So essentially everybody becomes chunky monkeys. They create too much estrogen. That estrogen negatively feeds back to the hypothalamus and pituitary. And guess what? Your testosterone level lowers. You have less drive, less motivation, less joie de vie. What do you do? Nothing. Because what's the point? So it's this ever evolving circle. And disappointingly, what's going to happen? You're going to feel worse. Despite making efforts, the sustainable changes that you make are often fruitless. So I've just had a conversation with one of my guys uh, who's considering TRT with a testosterone of six. He said, should I exercise? Yes. But is there any point with the testosterone of six? So we often say that exercise forms of an important part of raising your natural testosterone, and it does. Exercise is catabolic. Catabolic processes stimulate anabolic processes. So when you have borderline levels, 100% exercise to see if that can raise your testosterone level because it survives on this concept of balance, anabolic versus catabolic. Disappointingly, when you have low testosterone, you think, right, I'm going to over-exercise. I'm going to increase my catabolic demand. I'm going to force my body to recover and grow, prepare for the next day. Disappointingly, you obviously have this mismatch of catabolic and anabolic hormones. Without the capacity to actually have anabolism, that gap between catabolic and anabolic is going to widen. So you are going to have an excess of cortisol and the old neurotransmitters, neural noradrenaline, adrenaline, etc. And that's going to make you feel what? Anxious. So lots of guys who present with low testosterone have an uncomfortable level of anxiety. Now, you traditionally think about low testosterone as being low mood, lack of drive, lack of determination. But often guys have anxiety. So what do we do to correct that? Well, we start them on testosterone replacement therapy. That's not rocket science. So we like microdosing, as I've said a million times before, daily test sip and HCG because we like HRT. Do you have peaks and troughs? Well, by the very nature of injecting, obviously you have a peak and a trough, but essentially it follows the dernal pattern of your natural physiology. What could be better? Nothing. So when people come to me when they transfer care, well, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried this, I've tried that. Okay, well, you're going to try this and this is going to be what you're on. Now, the only caveat to that is some people don't tolerate HCG, perhaps about 5%, 10%. Some people with super low SHBGs need to have weekly microdosing of Nibido. Outside of that, patients under my care and supervision will be on test SIP long term we won't be changing we don't need to change because we understand science we understand physiology we understand pharmacology gold standard baby